Hi, thanks for joining me today. My name is Shira and I am a fashion and commercial photographer here in Manila, Philippines. If you are new to the channel, welcome. If you haven't seen any of my videos, most of them are really about thrifting and my deep, deep love for the ukay ukay and how I love digging through secondhand stores, flea markets, anywhere I can dig for things like props shoes, accessories, and of course clothes that I can use in everyday life and also for the photo shoots that I do when I'm not working. So whenever I do my ukay ukay hauls and my kind of styling videos, I try to complete the outfit as much as I can with accessories and shoes and bags and some of you have noticed the bags that I wear in those videos and asked if they are also secondhand and the answer is yes for most of them. A lot of the bags I use are indeed from the ukay ukay and even surplus stores and junk shops as you're gonna see later. I have a considerable amount of bags at the moment, um, majority of them secondhand. And I never really considered myself a bag person, so it's kind of weird that I have quite a growing collection of bags. But I always thought of myself as more of a shoes kind of gal. And I think my love for secondhand bags just followed along with my love for secondhand clothes and secondhand shoes. And I think the way I've been picking my bags is very similar to the way I pick my shoes. I really pick them with a lot of care because each time I buy something, I go into that knowing that I'm gonna take care of the piece for a long time, I'm gonna use it and wear it for a long time. Although a lot of secondhand bags will have imperfections and they do need a little time to maintain and take care of, I really enjoy the whole process and it really again is a treasure hunt for me when I try to look for bags in thrift shops and ukay ukays. As a treat, I guess, for those of you who are into bags, I don't know if it's a treat at all, but I may be making this a three-part video. So the first part is this. Um, all the bags that I found locally or have physically dug and found. And the second part will be my vintage bags. And I think I'm making that a separate video because most of them were purchased or found abroad. So I just feel like that needs another video. And then the third part or second part, whichever I can finish first, will be how I clean and maintain and sort of restore the bags that I find. And I've just learned these things over the years and from experience, I'm by no means a professional when it comes to restoring bags. I research on YouTube like most of you do and it's trial and error. Sometimes the tips you watch work, sometimes they don't. And you really just learn along the way and you take risks here and there. But so far I'm pretty happy with all the bags that I have and I'm glad I chose them and I'm glad I decided to stick with them and stick with the process of restoring or cleaning them because I really use all my bags a lot. I rotate them heavily and because I dress quite differently every single day, I need bags that go with my, I guess, characters. But we, we do have a good variety and I hope you like them. Before we proceed with the show and tell proper, I'm quickly going to show you a few products that I use to clean my bags. I know some of you are really curious about how I clean my bags. Um, I most of the time just wipe them down with um, a wet wipe. I use the alcohol-free ones or you can go to the baby section and then look for alcohol-free wipes. I think those are more gentle on the leather. And then I also use this. This is one of my favorite cleaning products. This is the Cadillac Boot and Shoe Leather Lotion. But really, if you go to the automotive section of the hardware or the grocery, you can just look for leather care products. This is one of the products that I've been using in place of my Cadillac. This is just the Armor All Leather Care. Most of the leather care products will work on bags, on real leather bags. It's very liquidy compared to the Cadillac, which is more of a lotion. It's really conditioning, but this works fine. So I use this on the outside of leather bags, also PVC material, um, stuff like that. And then to remove the odor, I know that's a big concern among people who want to try to get into buying secondhand bags. I use odor eliminators. This is the AutoGuard odor eliminator. There are lots of different kinds. This is one of the more affordable ones. This big um, 
bottle was only $199.75. I'm really gonna make a whole video about the bags that I've treated and whether or not they were successful, so please watch out for that. Now I think we should start on the bags because we have a lot to go through. I was gonna do them in order or something, I was gonna do them by size, but I stuffed most of them into this basket, so I guess this is just the order that we're gonna go in, like whatever I can pull out of this. It's really heavy, let me just, let me just put it down. Okay, so first up is this special bag. It is a kind of butterscotch colored, caramel colored bag from the 1970s. So this is more than 40 years old. It is, I believe, lucite, which was a popular uh, material that they used for handbags back then. I got this from an estate sale in Makati late last year. So the daughter of the woman whose belongings were being sold said that this was probably never used. I like how these tiles are stitched together with mustard thread. I always go for these colors, that very recognizable 1970s warm palette. And I use this mostly for blouses or dresses that have orange or yellow touches. It can work both as a summer bag or also as an evening bag. The price tag is still here. It says 500 and then it also says 1000 so even now I can't remember what I paid for it. This is another bag that appears to also have been from the 1970s. It's a hard shell purse with a metal strap and then the hardware is two-tone so you have a gold tone and a silver tone. It's just a clasp that opens and closes like this. I found this in one of the Bangkal thrift stores. I believe it was 250 pesos. It's quite beat up. The fabric is yellowed with age. There are a lot of spots and marks but I don't feel like it's dirty. I really just think it's it's old age and I don't mind that. I like wearing this bag with my 90s pieces, especially if they're floral or dainty florals that I feel like leather would be too heavy for. Another one from the Bunkal Thrift Shop, you will see a few pieces from the Bunkal Thrift Shops in this video, is this wicker handbag. Wicker? I'm not really sure if this is wicker, but it looks like a chair. And this one was only 50 pesos. There were a lot of other bags piled on top of each other, along with belts and shoes. A lot of them were in pretty bad condition, and this one was still salvageable. It has a few of the fibers unraveling, so I'm just gonna stick that on with some kind of adhesive. But it's still in pretty good shape. It has held its form. I love using this for outfits or very summery outfits that have hints of maroon or red. Let's jump to a more recent find and this is one that I'm quite proud of because I persevered. I found this snakeskin print leather envelope clutch in one of the bins in a store in Sunshine Mall, which is one of my favorite uka ukais, and if you haven't seen my haul from there, the link should be up here because that was a great haul. This was in one of those bins along with other not so nice pouches and bags. A lot of them were peeling. It really didn't look like there would be treasure in there, but I kept looking and I saw the snakeskin print and it was only a hundred pesos for this beautiful envelope clutch. It's in great condition. There aren't even any scratches on the hardware. If you open it up, it's very clean. It also has loops for a strap if you wanted to put a strap. One of my favorite outfits with this clutch was the one with my vintage Celine blazer that I found in a thrift store in Australia and then a cream turtleneck and also snakeskin print pants. I think it's very chic uh, for lack of a better word but it's a cool piece to have if you want to turn a basic outfit into something a little more edgy. This is another recent find. I think this was from my Makati Square haul. This is a dove gray slate gray PVC bag. It's also very clean inside. There's no brand name. It was originally 680 pesos, but it was on sale, so I got it for 480. And I like wearing this more casually, especially with uh, maybe a guy shirt, like a shirt probably borrowed from my brother, and then loose pants and a corduroy jacket like I wore it in my last video. I really love crossbody bags, even if you go all the way back to my wardrobe essentials video from two years ago. I mentioned in there that one of my essentials is really a crossbody bag because I like having my hands free and I like being able to stuff things into the bag and just not worry about holding anything. I'm gonna break up the vintage look 
just this once. This is probably the only non-vintage looking bag in here. This is another crossbody bag. I mean, I guess it kind of looks retro. It reminds me of um, like a race car something. <laughs> this is a leather bag made in Italy. The straps are fabric and adjustable. Very fresh bag when I found it. I tend to wear this when I go to home improvement stores, mainly because I always wear my Doc Martens when I go to those stores. So I normally wear this with just a cropped white shirt and high-waisted jeans and clunky clunky boots. And it's pretty cute. I like the color. We have more small bags, and these two I also found in the Bunkal thrift store. This one is more of an aubergine color, and this is a bright royal blue. They're both Charles Jordan from the 80s, I think. I like wearing this royal blue one whenever my outfit has hints of blue or purple. I feel like this solid block of royal blue really makes the whole outfit pop. And then this eggplant looking purse I like to use with deeper purples and richer reds or emerald greens. I just feel like it grounds everything. And I've also damaged it while opening it. Um, so if you can see it's like, peeling. But you can also find contact adhesive in hardwares. Again, that will be in my how I restore and clean my vintage bags video. I found these two in an ukay ukay along the service road that's on the side of Sun Valley, Paranaque. And this one was 100 pesos and this was 50 pesos. This is made of real leather. It reminds me a lot of a camera hand strap. Oh, camera strap. This is a really cute travel case from Marks and Spencer. It's Harris Tweed. It has the certification trademark. I, I thought it was a Vivian Westwood piece because of the logo, but it's Paris Tweed. It's padded, so it's really cool. Just a few more pouches, I promise. And I like using this clutch with, again, floral pieces, things with pastel colors, just really lighter colored dresses and tops that I feel like my leather bags will be too heavy for. It's pretty roomy and it's nice to carry and it's super clean. There's a tag on it that says $13. One last small bag, and it is this paisley pouch. I really like how this opens and closes. It's a wire or metal snap closure. The brand says Riva. I haven't researched what that brand is yet, but I found this in the MSM American Surplus store in Quezon City, very near ABS-CBN. This was only 50 pesos. I was actually done shopping. I bought plates and I bought lamps and mugs and glasses, basically homeware. And then I had a few more minutes before I had to go, so as usual I went through the random piles and then I saw a bit of paisley peeking out. When I pulled it out, it was a clutch. It didn't have a price on it, so I took it to the cashier and she said I could have it for 50 pesos because they had like a big sale going on that week. We have one more small bag. It is this Esprit hand handbag. It is a really cool chocolate brown suede. It is in the shape of a grocery paper bag when it opens up like that. I got this because of the brand. It's by Esprit. And I mentioned in quite a number of videos that we were always dressed in Esprit as little kids. My mom had a thing for Esprit. So she would dress up my brother and I in identical Esprit or guest outfits. And she also used a lot of Esprit bags. Most of them I unearthed a couple of years ago. I used them so much. And when I saw this and it said Esprit, I had to take it home because I know the quality of Esprit is really, really up there. I mean, my mom's bags that I'm using are probably older than I am. So I know this is also going to last me a long time. It's such a rich material that I like using this with very busy prints, especially micro floral prints that have hints of earthy tones. I just feel like it anchors everything and it makes you look really sensible. Stepping away from the solid colors, we have something that I consider to be very me as of the last two years probably. Whenever I see an animal print, I just kind of make a beeline for it and I found this in the Bunkal thrift shop once again. People go there mostly for furniture and we get a lot of our furniture there but I really just can't help but dig whenever they have those big plastic bins because I find all sorts of things, not just bags, I have like belts and I have shoes, I have necklaces, I have lots of sunglasses from Bunkal thrift stores and this bag was just waiting for me to take it home. This was I think 300 pesos, it's a Banana Republic bag, genuine leather 
and then the exterior or the shell is cowhide. I don't know how old this bag is, but it has definitely been used. Some of the fur has rubbed off on the edges. That's pretty normal if you're gonna get a cowhide bag. A bag like this can be worn with, of course, neutral such as white outfits, brown outfits, black outfits, but I also feel like this is gonna be a really nice piece to break up any monochromatic look. And then I wore this with a graphic tee and ripped jeans and my cowboy boots, my red cowboy boots that I found in Uke Uke. These boots are also in my Uke Uke shoes collection video, which I'm gonna link up here if you wanna see how much I got those boots for. This look was inspired by the late 80s for sure. This is a pretty special find. I found this in Makati Square. It was on sale and I really liked how it looked like a mandolin or like a lyre because of these vertical flaps of leather. I like how it's very roomy and I also like the finish. It looks really aged and weathered and well-loved. It was 70% off. I got a really big discount on it when I went that day and when I opened it, it's a designer piece. So this is a bag by Max Mara, right over there. I don't really know what year this is from, I'm gonna have to research it. But it does look like an authentic Max Mara piece, it says made in Italy. Even the hardware and the snaps really look like they're authentic. Because of the condition of the leather, I immediately applied my leather conditioner on it. And then I let it air out, I put this in the sun, so I opened it and then I just left it out on the balcony. The leather is a little more supple than when I got it. When when I got this, it was a little cracked and brittle. It really felt like dry skin, but a little leather conditioner is all it needs. Here's a bag that I have actually never used. I got this bag the same time I got the Suede Esprit bag. They were from the same ukai in Mahati. It is this beaded bag. It's quite heavy. No, actually it is heavy because it's made out of these plastic beads that are very tightly sewn together. I really love this style of bag. These things also became popular back in the day. And these beaded bags have been experiencing a revival maybe over the last two years. And I really love how sparkly and crystally this looks. I really like the color. This is a carpet bag, I believe it's called, because it has that texture of a carpet. And this is España, and you may have seen this in one of my recent Uke Uke videos. And it's just a sling bag, very easy to throw things in. It is very roomy, but I would be scared to put anything too heavy because this strap is a little thinner than the rest of the bag. I think this makes a good conversation piece when you wear it with a plain outfit. Now we move on to the bigger bags. I have five of them in front of me. I don't know if I missed anything, but these are the ones that I found locally. I'm gonna start with one of the cheapest ones, and it is actually a garment bag. It is this huge PVC garment bag that I got for only 100 pesos. It was the same thrift store I got the wicker handbag from. This had a musty smell to it as well. I was able to wet this more than the other bags. In fact, I may have scrubbed one of the parts with detergent because it is that kind of material that can be wet. I just took care to avoid the trim because I wasn't sure how this brown part would react to detergent and water, so I was just very careful when I scrubbed this. And now it is smell-free. It doesn't smell musty anymore. I mean, it doesn't smell good, but it just doesn't smell bad. It's pretty neutral. It looks like this when opened up. So there's a pouch in here to keep smaller items, and this is where I usually put socks or tights. And then here is where you put the hanger with the dress or the top and then you just zip it up and then fold it up and you're good to go. Less wrinkles. I also like that it has this really big compartment in front for accessories and it's pretty cute. It's very vintage looking. I mean it is vintage so it kind of matches all my other clothes. Another garment bag or should I say overnight bag is this one by Marie Claire. 
This is vintage and I found this in the Japan surplus store near our place. It's pretty dirty on the outside, so if you go to any Japan surplus store, you're gonna find a lot of things that are pretty dusty because they're normally open air and it's a warehouse or bodega style. So things are piled up on top of each other and you kind of have to wade through things or move things aside or take things off each other to get to what you want. And this is still quite dusty. I, I haven't cleaned it yet, but it is in really good condition. I love how the inside is padded. It's really reminiscent of those luggages back in the 60s where they had this sort of quilted padding. I'm also gonna have to treat this with the odor eliminator. It still smells quite musty. It's probably gonna take me around three weeks to make the odor disappear, which is a relatively normal amount of time. And it's also a good sized bag, so I'm gonna have to use more product on this. I like that it has straps for your clothes. It's really a travel bag. This material is really easy to clean. You could use a wet towel or a wet wipe. I'd follow it up with leather conditioner just to make it a little bit more shiny. And then I'm also gonna be polishing the hardware. So I think I should save this for my how I clean my vintage bags video. So I'm gonna leave this dirty until I get that video done. I'm just gonna show all the expensive bags and this was 1,000 pesos, this um, shoulder bucket bag. It's vintage DKNY, you can see over there. It's really thick pebbled leather. I love pebbled leather, it's so easy to maintain. So it just has this front pocket and then it also has a pocket inside. It's pretty deep and then you just secure it with these straps. If you carry it on one shoulder, it tends to slip because of its weight, so this one really needs to be carried over the shoulder, which is quite cumbersome if you want to reach into stuff quickly, but I guess that's what the front flap is for, or the front pocket is for, so you have to wear it like this. I'm gonna have to make the strap longer too, but can't complain, I think it's still a good find. Another bag that I'm particularly proud of is this Samsonite case. I love this so much. I found this in the same store. I found the big garment bag and the wicker bag. I got all of those on the same day and this was only 200 pesos. It was in pretty grim condition to be honest when I found it. It was really stinky. This bag also appears in my most worn thrifted pieces of 2018. I'm gonna link that video here. It was really dusty and dirty. It was in the kind of condition that would make you think twice about bringing it home. So first I polished and cleaned the black parts. This isn't leather, this is vinyl. And vintage vinyl I find can be as easy to maintain as regular leather. I also had to vacuum the inside. It was full of debris. There are all sorts of things in there. There were coins and just bits of, I don't know, dirt or sand. It was just, it was full of stuff. So I vacuumed it and then I wiped it and then I Lysoled it. The fabric part of the bag I just went over with a wet wipe. I didn't really want to scrub it with a toothbrush or a shoe brush because I was scared that the threads might get loose so I just wiped it very gently. And then I also polished the hardware with a regular metal polish that you can buy in the grocery or in the hardware. And now it is one of my most used work bags. I usually have a big backpack with me when I shoot that carries my main camera. And then I have my lights and their stands in their own bags. But when I need to bring my laptop and maybe a change of clothes and my thermos, I take this bag because it can fit all of those essentials in there and it's just more convenient for me that way. We are down to the last two bags. So this is a gym bag that is very similar in shape to the Samsonite bag. This one I found in Sunshine Mall. This was 980 pesos, a little pricey but everything was new arrival. I also use this the same way I use the Samsonite bag. My laptop fits in here, my water, I even brought food with me. I had like my food containers in here and my water. You can really stuff this silly and you're still gonna have space. This has fewer compartments than the Samsonite bag but I still find it really useful especially because it has a strap and this I forgot to mention is by Fred Perry. I also find the color very interesting. I don't tend to mix browns and grays and deep reds or berry reds but I find that it works really well in this bag and it also inspires some newer outfits I wear. And the last bag finally, I found this bag in a junk shop. Um, it's more of a Japan surplus although it really has more of a feel of a junk shop and it had a lot of truck parts, car parts, lots of random things from oil tins to photo albums to stockings, literally everything. This one was located in Evangelista in Bangkal. 
I'm gonna try to put a Google Maps link in the description box if you're up to it but it's pretty fun you find a lot of treasures there and this is one of the treasures that I found although it will need a little bit more polishing for it to become a diamond it is still a diamond in the rough so this is really what it looked like when I pulled it out of the pile it's this vintage Pierre Balmain luggage so it's an overnighter or a carry-on it's not in the best condition as you can see it's very deformed the fabric is just scrunched up from being stored probably for many many years there are also like paint stains here is that a paint stain or is it just powder but the rest of the leather is still in good condition the hardware is also in good condition it's the inside that's going to be a little bit more difficult for me to clean or to fix because the inside is cracking and peeling but it's not a sticky kind of peel so that might work in my favor i'm really going to be saving this bag for how i clean and restore my vintage or thrifted bags video just because there are so many things I have to do with this bag, it really is a diamond in the rough. And together we're going to see whether the things I have in mind for restoring this are going to work or not. We did it, Mexico! So those are all the bags for this video. Again, there's going to be another video just dedicated to my true vintage or real vintage bags that I found abroad. And then another video just specifically for how I clean and restore my thrifted or uke uke or vintage bags. I really hope I can do a good job on those videos, especially for those who want to try buying bags from the uke uke, or I hope it'll be helpful for those who want to dig in their grandma's or their titas closets and see if there are any bags that you can reuse. In case you want to see more of my outfits, I post more regularly on one of my Instagram accounts shiraluna.wardrobe and then I also have my normal Instagram account which is shiraluna so that's my photography account. Thank you for bearing with me and the bags today. I hope to see you in my next video. Take care everyone!